my name is Daphne Jensef. I'm a researcher at University College London in the UK. In this short video, I'm going to provide a brief introduction to video content delivery in the internet. In particular, we are going to cover three topics. First, we are going to see how content is delivered over the internet. Then, we will review where the stakeholders involved in the delivery chain. Finally, we will have a look at two main management operations that need to be performed in order to guarantee the best quality of service for content delivery. To understand why specific infrastructures are needed to deliver video content, let's first have a look at the distribution of traffic in Internet today. The two graphs, which were produced based on the statistics made available by the Cisco Visual Networking Index white paper, for the period 2015 to 2020, show internet traffic shares over four categories in 2015 and 2019, respectively. As we can see, internet traffic today is largely dominated by video content, and this predominance is expected to continue growing, with video traffic reaching a share of 80% by 2019. Video traffic is followed by data such as email, that will account for around 15% of total traffic, file sharing traffic, and finally online gaming, which despite its small contribution compared to the overall traffic, constitutes a market in constant expansion. The growing interest of internet users for video content comes also with a continuous demand for better video quality, which has direct impact on the requirements in terms of bandwidth. As can be seen in the graph, these requirements have been keeping increasing over the last few years and are expected to continue doing so. Of course, this poses some challenges and that respect the deployment of efficient mechanisms for the delivery of video content is essential. The prevalent method for the delivery of content nowadays is to rely on content delivery networks, or in short, CDNs. To understand what a CDN is, let's take the example of a user located somewhere in Europe. Our user is very interested in watching a new release from a famous studio located in the west coast of US, for instance. One way for the user to access the requested content is to go directly through the origin server hosting the video. However, while this solution works very well in a small network environment, it has a number of drawbacks when considering things at the scale of the Internet. The first issue has to do with the delay in accessing the content. Due to large geographical distances that the content request and reply have to go through, it may have a negative impact on the quality experience by the user. In addition to propagation delays, other factors, such as the load experience at the origin server side in order to serve the request coming from all over the world, can have a very negative impact on user satisfaction. Content delivery networks or large-scale geographically distributed infrastructures that consist of groups of specialized servers deployed over a wide geographical area. As we can see, these servers are divided into edge servers, responsible for serving requests in a dedicated area, and an origin server holding original content items. Of course, each server location is usually associated with a server farm to stay in the load in a specific region. If we now look at the stakeholders involved in the content delivery chain, we have on one side the end user and on the other the content producer and content provider, with the former producing new content to be made available to users via the content provider. The end user interacts with the content provider by requesting content. To access this content, the end user needs to subscribe for internet access to its local internet service provider. In the middle, the content delivery network is on one side responsible for distributing the content of the content provider, and on the other needs to process a request from the ISP's client. 
Let's now move on to some management aspects of video content delivery. The CDN traditionally performs two main types of operations, usually referred to as content placement and server selection. Let's start with content placement. While original content items are hosted in the origin server of the CDN, the interests of users for this content are scattered around the areas where the CDN has a presence. In fact, the popularity of a given piece of content is usually defined at a local scale. While some content items may have an homogeneous level of popularity across different areas, local interest or in general observed in different zones controlled by the CDN. Given that hosting content consumes storage resources, it is of primary concern to the CDN to judiciously decide on how to allocate copies of original content in the different edge servers associated with each geographical region. In particular, these should be selected in such a way that most requests can be served locally by the edge server. As a result, content placement decisions are essentially taken based on the popularity of a given item in a specific region. Formally, content placement operations have to do with how to distribute the content items in the different server locations, given the constraints in terms of the available storage capacity at each of these locations. Placement decisions can target different performance objectives, such as reducing the overall delay perceived by the users, or balance the request processing load across multiple locations. They can also focus on optimizing the use of internal network resources. Placement decisions can follow two execution schemes, a reactive one or a proactive one. In a reactive scheme, placement decisions are taken on the fly upon receiving content requests. In contrast, in a proactive approach, Placement decisions are taken periodically based on the prediction of content popularity for the next configuration period. The second main management operation performed by the CDN is what is usually referred to as server selection. In that case, decisions concern the choice of the server to which incoming content requests will be redirected for being served in case the requested content is available from different locations. The objective of server selection is to decide on the best server location to serve each client request. There exist different mechanisms to implement the server selection decisions. The most common one or DNS-based redirection approaches by which the address of the relevant server is communicated to the client by its local DNS resolver. In the case of HTTPS mechanism, the server redirection process is performed by the servers themselves by employing the HTTP redirect response. Other approaches include the use of smart intermediaries such as routers or proxies. Of course, it is important to note that for scalability reasons, the server selection decisions are usually taken at the group of clients level rather than for each individual user. We are now coming to the end of this video. To wrap up, there are three main points that we discussed. The first one is that CDNs are today the most common method to deliver content over the internet. The second point is the fact that CDNs employ massively distributed infrastructures to serve clients in a wide geographical area. Finally, the third point is that CDNs are primarily concerned with placing content in the best available location and selecting the most appropriate servers to serve incoming client requests. I thank you for watching this video, which was produced in the context of the Flamingo Network of Excellence projects of the EU7's framework program.